Welcome back. If we had countdown clocks, we'd have a countdown clock up now because there's just days left before the next presidential debate. Joining us now from Houston, Texas, Jeff Rowe, former presidential campaign manager for Ted Cruz, and from the City of Angels Democratic Strategist, Steve McMahon, the co-founder of Purple Strategies. Gentlemen, welcome. We haven't talked to either of you in a while, so Jeff, start with you. What is the state of the presidential race as you see it? Uh, Trump's down a bit, and I think it's setting up a Super Bowl of sorts for Sunday to realign the race. It's important because of the storm, because of the other news, because of the waning days, because of early votes starting to come in, particularly in the key states in the next few weeks. It's critical to reset the narrative. If you remember going into the first debate, Trump was on, had momentum. He was on a tear. He was putting even states that were seemingly out of reach in play. And that changed on Sunday night. And so it slid back. It more, it more kind of resembles how it looked before we went into the conventions. And so now I think Sunday, it makes Sunday very critical. But for, to be clear, there are some outlier polls that show some Trump hanging tough nationally. But most of the numbers seem to have a margin of victory advantage for for the Clinton campaign. Steve, Trump put himself in the current hole based on a bad debate performance. Can he dig out of it completely or mostly with a good one? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's a really good question. I think structurally this race has always been about a three or four point advantage to the Democrat, and that could have been Hillary Clinton or whoever else was nominated just because of the Electoral College and the partisanship in the country. But what you started to see in the last week is, you know, as Trump has become Trump again, um, he's begun to slide backward. And you look at these battleground states and, you know, the states that he looked like he might have a chance to win uh, a couple weeks ago, he now looks like he, he's falling behind in. States like Colorado and New Hampshire and some of the others that uh, Nevada that that he really desperately needs to win even in Ohio there was a poll yesterday that showed Hillary Clinton ahead for the first time in some time so you know he's he's uh, he's losing ground in Florida and Virginia in the states that he must have he's losing ground in states that Republicans have never been successful unless they've won like Ohio and uh, and I think it's getting very very late in the game for him to turn it around and I think being desperate and angry and lashing out is exactly the wrong strategy for him but as I predict what we'll see on Sunday night Steve just think about the the town hall format and we have talked about this around the office a lot it's not obvious that either one of them is better you know, demonstrably better that in this in this setting who do you think if you think about you know Trump's more of a showman she's got more experience debating who does the format favor well, actually, this won't surprise you because I'm a Democrat, but I actually believe that Hillary Clinton is probably more natural in those kind of forms because they're much more like the way Democrats have to campaign for president and the way Democrats campaign if they run for the Senate, for instance. Donald Trump, remember, throughout this campaign has mostly been big rallies, standing behind a podium, you know, screaming insults at people, and he's not walking around a crowd interacting with real voters. So I think for Hillary, it's a much more natural setting. Donald Trump's a showman, so he's obviously going to be a good performer. But I think for her, it doesn't take a performance. It's just kind of who she is and how she's campaigned. Jeff, you, you were, when you were running Ted Cruz's campaign, you spent a lot of time watching your guy on a debate stage with Donald Trump. Make the case for why Steve's wrong and why this is a better, more favorable setting for Donald Trump. Well, I would actually agree with him. So, but this, this is why I think <laughs> is the reason is because Donald's Fine. got a fifty-foot flag Go behind him. Disagree with 25, the premise of my right. question. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-five thousand people stay. But this is why I would say this is why I believe Steve's got it wrong, is that he has an opportunity to showcase a, a part of himself that he's never done before, and that sets the expectations. If you see this guy who's you know, red-faced and yelling and getting people whipped up and 25,000 people, the 50-foot flag and a big, you know, presidential look. But then you see in his advertising, even of late, where he's kissing a child on the cheek at the end of one of the commercials. I mean, this is an opportunity. I believe he walks in structurally in a disadvantage from the way he's campaigned versus the way Hillary has campaigned. But, but as an opportunity, I think the sky is the limit, therefore, for Donald. If he comes out and is emotive, connects, shares, right. shares his heart, as Mike Pence would say, that's a real opportunity, and we've not seen, and that could be an opportunity for so him. So he should avoid kicking any babies out of that room on Sunday night, right? Probably so, for at least for one night. Right. Yeah. You guys, Are you sure he didn't bite that baby? <laughs> no biting. <laughs> you guys, I've done a lot, a lot of races, and, and I want to ask you about one that's gotten a, t a, a ton of attention, but I don't think enough, which is Rob Portman versus Ted Strickland, Ohio Senate. Jeff, uh, what lessons are there for the other candidates running this year, if any, with Portman running way ahead of Trump in Ohio and putting away a race that people thought would be close. You know, there's this like an incumbent dilemma that they have when, when they have a candidate 
that's that's announced and running against them. How long do you take? Do you ignore them and and just kind of oh act, act like nothing's going on in your race, everything's fine? Versus when do you engage them? And it's a dilemma that goes on in every campaign. What the Portman campaign did well and what incumbents routinely do poorly is engage immediately. They accepted that they're in a tough race. They accepted they're in a presidential swing state in a in a battleground <laughs> year, and they went after it early. And, and often, and I think that's one of the lessons. It's always, the, as an incumbent, you want to have this invincibility. You don't want to show credibility to your opponent. It's tougher than I'm saying that it is, but it's really a difficult decision to actually take a race seriously, show that you that you're worried and you could be defeated, and engage a campaign structurally from the very beginning. He did that and was a master at it. It didn't hurt that he had a. A poor challenger, but he put he put this this race away. And can you believe we're talking about the DSCC pulling out of critical battleground states right. that they should always be in at this point in the race? Steve, I want to ask you a question today. We got some news from the publishing world. Donald Trump's paperback is out. Uh, previously, it was known as the, the hardcover version of it was called Crippled America: How to Make right. America Great Again. The new version is called Great Again: How to Fix Our Crippled America. Um, what do you take from that? You think that's a, was a well-handled uh, piece of, uh, of a shift, a little switcheroo? And what should we? What's the lesson of the fact that he's decided to go that way? Here's what I take from it: Kellyanne Conway is firmly in control. Um, somebody must have explained to Donald Trump that that negative, angry, vitriolic people don't get elected president of the United States. The, the American people typically, and whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, they tend to, to, to be drawn to somebody who's offering a positive, aspirational vision for the future that takes America to a better place where we all benefit, where we all work together, where we all kind of strive together. You can see it, frankly, in Hillary's um, slogan, Stronger Together. That sort of is an embodiment of this idea. So I think Donald Trump finally figured out that the election's about the future, and it's about a better future, and that's what people want. Right. And that's even, even his most ardent supporters um, desperately want a better America, and I think he probably made that little switch in time for the paperback so he could sell more copies and perhaps position himself a little better yeah. to actually be that yeah. kind of a leader. Do we have right. those book covers? Do we have yeah. that book cover? They, they were up. They were up. Oh, we showed them already. I like the best thing about it is the look of different faces. Yeah. That's the best part about it. The Steve McMahon, Jeff Ryan, there it is. gentlemen, thank you so much. There it is.